Welcome to the home of 100 to 1 Faith TV, the place for stories of amazing faith overcoming impossible odds. It's June 5th at Grace Hartwood United Methodist Church. It's Pentecost. I'm Larry Gent, and this is the message for this Sunday. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Our call to worship is before you now, please join me in a word of prayer. Spirit of the living God, you have created all that is. Send forth your spirit to renew and restore us that we may proclaim your good news until all your children understand and believe. Amen. Our reading is from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, then I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and suffer, so I may boast. But if I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Our New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in utter bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native tongue? Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Paul's message about the gift of love comes at the end of his discussion of spiritual gifts. 
So we're going to back up for the sermon text to 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm going to read from the First Nations version. If one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. If one part of the body is honored, the whole body celebrates. So then together you all form the body of the chosen one, and each one of you has a place in that body. The great spirit has set in place those members of his body that he gifted to care for his sacred family. He set in place first message bearers, second prophets, and third, third wisdom keepers who teach. After that come some with miraculous powers, some with healing gifts, some who help and serve, some who bring guidance, and some who have the gift of speaking in other languages. Can you see that not all are message bearers or prophets or wisdom keepers, that not all have miraculous powers or healing gifts or the gift of speaking in other languages or interpreting those languages? I want you to set your hearts on the chief gifts, the ones that will be the greatest blessing to the sacred family. And now I will show you the most beautiful path of all. The American sign language word for Methodists is two hands rubbing together eagerly. It is the same sign as the word enthusiasm. At the brick red high steeple Methodist church I attended as a child, I thought there had been to be some mistake when they named them that. We stood stock still and read our creeds and litanies. The sermons were more like lectures on Sorn Kierkegaard, with quotes like, to venture causes anxiety, but not to venture is to lose oneself, and to venture in the highest is precisely to be conscious of oneself. People would nod their heads seriously and agree that this was truly a deep message. Nobody knew what it meant, but it sure was deep. Now, back down home in the white frame church out in the coal fields where my family was from, well, that was a different story. People threw their heads back and sang from their toes. They'd shout back at the preacher and clap their hands, and the preachers would lament that Methodists just didn't get excited like they used to back in the day. Well, they seemed pretty excited to me. At least they did, until they took me out to an old-time camp meeting. Now that place was eat up with enthusiasm. When the music played, people would get happy and dance. When the music stopped, they went right on dancing. Somebody would shout hallelujah for no reason at all. It wasn't even in the bulletin. We didn't even have a bulletin. And everybody would all of a sudden start shouting hallelujah along with them. I had never seen such spirit-filled worship in my life, certainly not hanging out with Methodists. But yet there they were, laughing, crying, shouting, and carrying on. It was all a little confusing at first. The Holy Spirit is like that. When the Spirit came on people in that upper room at Pentecost, some people said, <laughs> sounds like they've been drinking or something. It's just too much for some folks. People go to shouting and they, they say, those enthusiasts, they must think their God is deaf. Why do they have to shout? Why don't they just simmer down? But other folks got the message. They heard in their heart language. There was no need for interpretation or explanation. They heard it and they understood no matter where they were from, no matter what color they were, no matter what their political affiliation, they heard the message and they understood. 
I know only two things that can be universally understood and they are closely related. One is music and the other is love. Most of the time those two things are so intertwined that it's hard to tell one from the other. It's hard to tell where music leaves off and love begins. That first Pentecost Sunday, it was quite a show, but it wasn't meant to entertain people. God wanted to, to spill out into the streets and reach people. The Apostle Paul, he had a church full of enthusiasts, shouting and dancing and carrying on. He taught them that the Holy Spirit wants to fill every believer, and they were all trying to outdo each other. But Paul said, hang on here. The reason God fills you up is so you can show love to the world. The way you can tell real worship from a cheap show, well, it's simple, really. It all comes down to love. Jesus said that, too. He said the whole Bible is in these two lines. Love the Lord your God with your heart and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all you got and show it by the way you love your neighbor. Yep, that just about sums it all up. All the Bible studies, all the worship services, all the theology, all the sermons, all the church programs, all the bulletins, all the camp meetings, all the Kierkegaard quotes. They just don't mean a thing if they don't have that swing. They don't mean a thing until they help us show the world. God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Today it's Communion Sunday here at Grace. Today we offer a sacrament that's hard, that, that's easy to see and hard to explain. It all comes down to this. This body and blood of Jesus Christ that we share is the evidence that God loves you and there is nothing you can do to stop it. You're invited to receive this gift of love today, to be filled with the Holy Spirit until you overflow. Wherever you go and whatever you do, to let that love spill over onto everyone you meet. Now you can show it in whatever way the Spirit moves you. You can speak it however the Spirit gives you utterance. Shout it if you need to. Moan it if you need to moan. And whisper if you need to whisper. Just be sure whatever you do, it shows God's love to the world because that's a gift everyone can understand.